you know? What are some of the basic observations someone can make to ascertain that the Earth is neither a globe or spinning? We've been taught that we're on a ball spinning around the sun. And so to hear that you might be on a flat plane, uh, motionless at the center of the universe with all the celestial bodies spinning around you, just as it appears, actually comes as a surprise. But it shouldn't, because our eyes, experience, and common sense all tell us that the horizon is perfectly flat, and we feel motionless. We don't hear ourselves whizzing by at thousands of miles per hour. No matter how high amateur rockets or balloons have gone up, the horizon rises to the eye of the observer all the way up, and that's only consistent with a flat plane. Their theory just gets more and more wild as time has gone on. And so, yeah, it began with the spinning Earth going a thousand miles per hour, which is then circling around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour, which then they decided the sun was, it wasn't a heliocentric model, but more of an acentric model, where they don't know where the center is and we're just exploding out of a big bang. So the, uh, the sun, uh, we're, we're spinning around the sun and then the sun and us are spinning around the Milky Way galaxy, they say, at 500,000 miles per hour. And then the entire Milky Way galaxy, they say, is shooting off from the Big Bang at 670 million miles per hour, almost the speed of light. Uh, so there's at least four uh, rip-raging, contradictory motions supposedly going at all times, yet you don't experience uh, any of it, nor can you measure any of it using the stars. The flat motionless Earth is not only is it the greatest conspiracy of all, it's also the easiest to prove. I mean, it, it just is flat and motionless, just as it appears. Look into it more and more, make it, make it a, a thing to try and debunk it, if you will. You know, even if you want to do it that way. Negative reinforcement works too. Try as you will, you're only going to find proofs for the flat motionless Earth you're not going to confirm that you're on a spinning ball. The curvature of the Earth eludes us. Either the Earth is much larger in circumference than we are told, or the curve just doesn't exist. People assume that there is a curve, but it's never really been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Cameras with fisheye lenses, Hollywood movies, and NASA CGI are the closest we get to seeing curvature. The deception and the lies are just so pervasive and they're just so deep that I, I swear it gives me a headache. The surface of water is always level. This is just natural physics. We know this, that water, uh, if unobstructed and uncontained, will flow outwards, uh, finding it the easiest course to maintain its own level, right? So, um, but the ball earth model claims that the oceans are huge hundred mile walls of curved water curving around the ball. That's ridiculous. They say that gravity makes it this possible, but you don't see that. You go right. to the beach, you see a completely flat horizon. You see water just ever so gently uh, coming up on the shore. So there's the pretty blue marble that NASA claims we are living on with circumference of 24,901 and 3959 radius. So to find the curvature, you take eight inches times your distance squared. That's eight inches times your distance squared. And if you don't square the distance, you end up with this. And this is not what NASA has shown us. They have given us a beautiful blue marble that we love. So, so you get 8 inches for 1 mile, 32 inches in 2 miles, 16.6 .6 feet with 5 miles, so on and so forth. So what I did is I shot this pier, which is in Daytona Beach, Florida. And as you can see, between the water and the walkway of the pier is about 12 to 16 feet based on the height of the people and the railing. So I started at... Um, Granada, which is 4.92 miles away, and I shot this, and based on that distance and the formula, there should be 16 feet of curvature, but obviously you can still see the entire gap under the, um, the walkway there between that and the water. So in addition to that, behind that pier is actually a lighthouse, which you can see 
uh, right above the pier, you can see the light. That is 16 miles away from my location. And I shot that lighthouse. Now that lighthouse is 175 feet tall, and the curvature from 16 miles away should be 170 feet. You can clearly see about the entire lighthouse uh, beyond that pier. So like I said, there should be 170 feet of curvature, but there's none. And those hotels there are even further. Those are in New Smyrna, which is 20 miles away. If NASA is right, and there is, you know, we do live on a ball, they're going to have to make up that curvature. If it's not in the 20 miles I'm shooting, well then that means it's got to be made up further on down the line. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say we live on this ball and then say, oh, you can't detect the curvature. Well, you got to detect it somewhere because if it's not dropping here, it's going to have to drop even more down the lines in order to make that circle, that ball they say we live on. And it's pretty round. That blue marble they give us is perfectly round. Lighthouses are one great example. The Isle of Wight Lighthouse in England, it's 180 feet high and can be seen up to 42 miles away, a distance at which modern astronomers say the light should fall 996 feet below the line of sight. Why can you still see it? Another one worth mentioning that people be familiar with is the Statue of Liberty. It stands 326 feet above sea level and on a clear day can be seen as far as 60 miles away. Now if the Earth was a globe at the dimensions that they give us, that would put Lady Liberty at an impossible 2,074 feet below the horizon. The Flat Earth model is a working model. It's by no means definitive due to the nature of this massive cover-up. For the past 500 years we've been completely buying into the Copernicus heliocentric model, but what we do know about the Flat Earth is based on the azimuthal equidistant map that seems to be working out. This map goes as far back as the year 1000 and possibly earlier now used as an official map by the U.S. Geological Survey and also as the official logo for the United Nations. Is this our real home being hidden from us in plain sight? I think it is. The first thing a lot of people say is, where is the edge? Well, look at this map where Antarctica is a 360 degree ice barrier that holds the water in. These ice walls are real and they stand 150 feet above the surface of the water. Then you need to understand that there is no independent access to Antarctica. Average people can only go there on a guided tour. It has no towns, no cities, and no permanent residences. What's past the 150 foot ice wall is anyone's guess. How far the ice extends, how it terminates, and what exists beyond it. The Antarctic Treaty, signed in 1959 by 12 nations and more later on, states that Antarctica is for peaceful purposes only. No military activities, just scientific research and government exploration. Expeditions by any party must be discussed in advance. It's the longest and most successful treaty between nations. The treaty also states that there are ships, stations, and equipment to ensure compliance of the treaty. Sounds like military activity to me. Anyway, so this azimuthal equidistant map appears to be correct for the most part. Over the centuries, there's been other maps that look pretty close to it as well. Let's look at an interesting story that was recently in the news that supports this flat map. A woman gave birth on a flight from Bali to Los Angeles, so the flight made an emergency landing in Alaska. Here's what it would look like on a globe. Now, here's what it would look like on a flat earth. Which one makes more sense? 